Hi friends, welcome to Kraku's video series. I'm Saili Kali. I'm one of the co-founders of Kraku and an alumna of IMM Dabar. In today's video, we'll be discussing the Dashcat, uh, the first Dashcat. Uh, I uh, would be eager to know how your experience was with the Dashcat. So please do let us know in the comment section what were your scores were, how you found each of the sections. But in this case, I'll be discussing how the sections were, what were the difficulty levels of the sections and what I feel would have been a good attempt uh, or what uh, you should have ideally targeted. Uh, before we begin, uh, be, uh, do check out our live attempt of uh, this. So basically, uh, I have attempted the quant and the uh, DILR section. Uh, we will be putting up the live attempt on the website so that uh, uh, you can see how to go about it, how somebody should uh, distribute their time, how to actually save time while solving questions and essentially just go how to actually uh, do well in this particular test. I think Maruti has also taken the verbal uh, section. I make the verbal section so I can't take the verbal section. He checks the quant and uh, DILR section so he can't take that. So we essentially swap uh, the roles so that we can do live attempts of each of these parts. So do check out the, uh, the live attempts to see how you should have approached the questions, how you can get a high score in uh, these sections. Okay. Uh, let us start with each of the sections. Uh, what would have been, what you should remember going in and uh, uh, what I want you to do is before even uh, just seeing this dash cat, you go and analyze your own attempt, see what you could have done uh, differently, what you should have done differently, uh, what were the questions that you skipped uh, answering and now take a look at them from fresh eyes. Well, was it actually a difficult question that you skipped or you basically uh, were not able to think through in the exam environment under the pressure. So always you should go back uh, to uh, each mock and see the questions that you couldn't solve or you didn't solve correctly or the questions you skipped entirely that uh, was the question actually difficult or was it just the exam pressure. Okay. So let's see section by section each of the sections of Dashcat 1. So this section was moderate to hard, uh, hard level in difficulty. It wasn't an easy section as such. Uh, but there were still some easy questions in it. So basically there were four RCs of which three were moderate to hard and one was super easy. And that super easy RC was at the last. So if you did not actually find that RC or if you did three RCs sequentially, one, two, three, four, and if you did this, 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 you would not find the fourth RC which was the super easy one. So let's take a look at each of the individual RCs first. So the index fund RC which was at the very top was the hardest. It required technical knowledge. If you had technical knowledge, you would understand it very, very well and very easily. But if you did not have financial technical knowledge, you would find that RC very difficult to do. Not saying that it is impossible to do without fine technical knowledge. That is not the case at all. But essentially, you would have a lot of time thinking through the implications. So certain times, basically, the implications are formed in your mind very quickly based on the fact that you had prior knowledge of it. So for example, when they say that index fund industry saved money for the investors, ordinary investors, you would know that by default if you actually had the technical knowledge. But if you didn't have the technical knowledge, it would be new information that you would have to process in your mind. A lot of time this happens when you are reading new information or something that is entirely new to you, you would find it very hard. So this is something which had a lot of technical information and lot of implications that arose from that technical information. It is not something that you could not have inferred but for somebody who had no prior knowledge it would have been difficult to do. So this was a hard RC and it was at the very start so it could have messed up your entire attempt by stumping you at the very start. So whenever you see something which is like technically heavy and you are not able to get it quickly what I would suggest is leave that RC, go to the second one, go to the third one, go to the fourth one. Do not spend like 15 minutes trying to do an RC which you are finding almost impossible to understand. That would not be a good strategy. The second one which is of public philosophy, it was very easy, uh, like the passage was uh, uh, slightly tricky. It was about philosophy, the author was arguing a point but he was not very clear or concise in the point he was making and there was a lot of long run on sentences, very descriptive uh, language as such, kind of uh, not easy to understand. The passage itself was hard but if you actually ditched the RC looking at the passage, you would be in for a surprise because the questions were easy. The questions were more or less direct and uh, you could actually look at certain parts of the RC and get the answers. So the questions were not difficult at all. The second RC I would say would be something that you should attempt because the questions were super easy. So whenever you are tempted to leave an RC also, what I would suggest is once you have had a certain amount of read of the RC and you are finding the RC difficult to read, go and take a look at the questions. Are the questions also super difficult or are the questions like which of the following has not been given? 
or which of the following has not been given as a reason the author will agree with all of the following except when you see questions which are on the easier side then uh, you have to not leave that rc because uh, then even though the passage is hard your accuracy in that rc will be very good because the questions are easy okay the third rc which was queens of insects is a scientific rc it was easy to read but again with scientific rcs you will have to think through all the tech, uh, aspects of it you have to be very exact with what can be inferred in a scientific rc because in science there is no maybe or probably it is you know this for sure or you know don't know this for sure at all so scientific rcs are easy to read but you have to be very exact in answering scientific rcs the last rc which was on wheelchairs was super easy it was just absolutely detail oriented objective almost rc and it was the rc you should not have missed so if you have missed that rc i would suggest that you have to think about your attempt strategy see basically in your attempt strategy if you are somebody who doesn't solve the entire section if you solve only 3 rcs then you have to pick those 3 rcs with a lot of care if you are somebody who solves the entire section then there is no real uh, danger as such but if somebody who if you are leaving certain rcs if you have left this rc because it came last then you should rethink the strategy of how you are picking your rcs because this was the easiest of them all absolutely easy to read and easy to solve so you should always think that uh, did i pick the right rcs in this case the para summary questions there were two hard para summary questions one easy para summary question the rasputin para summary question was an easy one because it was basically checking which options had distortions eliminating options with distortions and then checking them the if you uh, missed out on that then maybe you should uh, uh, essentially the uh, rasputin para summary question would tell you whether or not you are spending sufficient time on the para summary question if you are like quickly quickly going through the para summary questions you would uh, end up marking the wrong answer that was an easy para summary question which you should not have uh, missed so maybe at that point of time you should think that maybe i need to spend more time per para summary question the other two para summary questions were difficult so it is understandable if you don't get them right the para jumbles were easy to moderate uh, you should have scored in the uh, para jumbles the theta para jumbles the oc there was one easy and one uh, difficult the chemicals out of context para jumble was super easy because four lines had one clear theme and one line was had opposite theme so one line has opposite theme and opposite meaning then you should identify that uh, this doesn't really suit the particular paragraph right so you should uh, at least in those kind of oc you should not really make a mistake uh, in para jumbles that uh, were uh, Uh, theta para jumbles they were also easy to moderate so if you made a mistake over there just basically think how much time did i spend over here should i have spent more time that if i had spent like 10 15 seconds more would i have gotten this answer right so also you have to think of how much time you are spending on ba and how much time if you had spent a few more seconds would you have actually improved your overall uh, score by just spending a little more time on ba okay so now that you uh, understand the uh, ideal attempt in this kind of a scenario would have been 3 rcs and 5 vas at least uh, i feel that overall the uh, section is difficult partly because the first rc is difficult and that kind of sets the tone so a lot of people trip up on that rc and because of that then their entire section goes bad but if you are smart and you saw that that rc was difficult to begin with you should have immediately gone to the next uh, rc so then you would not have been tripped up and you would have had three good rc attempts and at least five va attempts and you would have done a fairly good job and gotten a good score in this section now let's go to the dilr section i believe the dilr section was easy to moderate see uh, essentially when you have four sets two four section uh, four question sets and two six question sets there are basically uh, how you can attempt them uh, if you are looking to solve at least two sets see one set would definitely not be a good attempt so if you are solving two sets you should ideally go for a 6 plus 4 4 plus 4 would not be enough attempt to actually clear cat cut off so i at the very least you have to do 6 plus 4 then you have the option of doing 6 plus 4 plus 4 or you have 6 plus 6 plus 4 these are the three configurations which are good configuration this would be slightly on the edge of cut off this would be comfortably above the cut off and this would be a great attempt that you would be uh, scoring well in this section if you are solving all the 20 questions then hats off to you but most people are not able to solve uh, all four sets but if you are able to solve all four sets great but at the very least you should be solving two sets and the two sets cannot be 4 plus 4 it has to be 6 plus 4 at the very least 10 questions is a bare minimum there and a, a good attempt would be 6 plus 4 plus 4 a very good attempt would be 6 plus uh, 6 plus 4
Now having said that, which one should you have picked in this? So if you have to do 6 plus 4, so first the 6 question sets, one was on chess, the other one was uh, games and tournaments which was dice roll. Uh, then there was a charts question and the puzzles question. Both 4 question sets that is the puzzles question and the charts question were easy. But the charts was uh, time consuming but very easy. The puzzles question was harder to solve but once you solve it would can be done in 8 minutes, under 8 minutes and you can then do 6 plus 4 plus 4 if you were doing that. But the charts question was slightly more time consuming. Both of these were easy and you should have ideally been able to solve both of them. Both of these sets, 4 question sets were easy and ideally you should have been able to solve both of them. The two six question sets were slightly tricky. Initially, when I saw the uh, set on chess, I was very intimidated by how long it was. When I saw the set, I thought this is going to be very long and very difficult to solve. But it was actually very intuitive. The instructions were exactly what a chess moves are. Uh, this It was not counterintuitive to chess. So if you knew how a chess uh, board is, how the chess pieces move, this should have been very trivial for you to solve. And this was actually long, but long to read but easy to solve. And you could have been done with this in under 8 to uh, 10 minutes as such. So ideally what I would say is that an ideal attempt would be this and one of these 6 and 6 plus 4. This dice roll game was harder and it was easier to get wrong because you could miss certain cases or uh, certain scenarios. This is essentially an enumeration type of puzzle where you enumerate the type of cases or the uh, different types of cases or scenarios that can occur. And an enumeration type of puzzle, it is easy to forget or not consider a case. So in those type of kind of uh, puzzles, it is especially difficult uh, when you have time pressure. So whenever you see something which is an enumeration kind of a scenario, you should really think that can I solve this? If I'm, if you're good at enumeration, go for it. If you're finding the remaining sets hard, uh, then definitely go for this. But in most cases, I would say that your ideal attempt should have been the chess set, which was easy and one of puzzles or charts. Ideally, you should be able to solve both puzzles and charts. See, the puzzle set was like the bread and butter of your DILR section. It is a simple Einstein's puzzle. You should be able to solve it. If you are not able to solve it, go and see arrangement sets again. See Einstein puzzles concept video again and solve 10 Einstein's puzzles uh, now. If you keep solving that, what you will see is that it becomes very repetitive. And if you have solved enough puzzles, you will be able to solve this one fairly easily. This is, I call it bread and butter because you can always rely on that set to uh, get some marks in uh, your attempt. Because it is very standardized, not standardized, it is very, very uh, uh, deterministic. Okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, you will get to the final table, then you can answer the question. So basically, this is something that you can rely on and you should be able to get it right. The charts one can be tricky, uh, you can misread some information and you can get it wrong, but puzzles you should not get wrong. So both of them were on the easier side, but uh, if you are not able to get the puzzles, go and practice from the puzzle section. Overall, I felt there were three sets which were doable, one set which was on the harder type, harder side the dice roll game and because it is enumeration it is also tricky you can think that okay I got an answer but that answer would be wrong because you didn't consider a particular case okay so let's go to the final con section the con section I felt was slightly easier than cat uh, uh, 2021 quant level for reference I felt that uh, you could easily attempt more questions in this particular uh, quant section than you could have attempted in cat 2021 quant it was easy to moderate difficulty. Uh, it was just slightly lower. It was not considerably easier, just slightly easier than the CAT 2021 quad. A good attempt would have been 13 plus. I think, uh, see, personally, I attempted like 16 in CAT uh, 2021 quant. I felt the questions were harder, more time consuming. Each question took time to do. In this particular CAT, uh, in this particular quant section, I attempted, if you see my live attempt, I attempted 18 questions, which is more than I have attempted in most of the CATs that I have given. So this was just slightly simpler than CAT 2021 quant. And in this case, you should be able to attempt at least 13 questions. If you are not able to attempt 13 questions, you should think that where am I wasting my time? Where is the time going? Am I doing a improper allocation of time? The biggest time sinks were at the very start. For example, what I saw also in uh, terms of the time spent by students across the questions in the quant section, the first uh, question people spent uh, 400 seconds on average, 400 uh, 
400 to 450 seconds. So that's over seven minutes spent on the first question. If you're on the first question seven minutes into the section, your entire section is going to go bad because then you are going to be in time pressure throughout that particular section. So you have to identify your time sink early on and avoid the time sinks. It is also an important ability to have. See, whenever you feel that, okay, I've started the question four minutes in, five minutes in, I don't have the answer. What I generally do in those cases is that I leave the question and I leave that particular area also. I go to the very end of the section. So I go to the last question of the section because then it is like a complete uh, 360. Then I start from the backwards and go front. So then I start from the very end. Then I uh, do the last few questions, then I come to the middle few questions and then at the very end I come to the first row of questions. And I do that because sometimes the first row of questions are the hardest and they are the worst time sinks that are there. And when you start off your quant section and you are not able to get a single answer in the first 5 to 10 minutes, then your confidence is shaken, you are not able to solve the section. Whenever you see that okay 5 minutes into the quant section I am not able to get an answer for this, just leave that question, leave the first row of questions, go to the second row, third row, go to the very end. Because what the paper setter has done is he has put the hardest questions up top. So don't fall for that, go to the second row, go to the third row, you will find easier questions there. Okay, always remember that. Another thing that you would suggest that in, there was so parts of this particular section where you should have used options, particularly in algebra. Uh, in logarithms also, I just used sections to solve where I wanted to save on time. So always remember that you should use these, I meant use options as much as possible. You should use uh, options as much as possible to save time. Uh, doing a question in uh, four minutes is actually you are actually it's a net negative than doing a question in one minutes and one and a half minutes you have 22 questions and uh, 40 minutes you have less than two minutes so if you are spending four minutes per question you are essentially saying that i'm not going to be able to solve that many questions when you are doing that so whenever possible use the options to uh, save on time uh, if you see the live attempt you will see the points of time when i just use the options to save on time so with the options you know that only so uh, you found a particular condition while solving you found a condition and uh, you could see that only one of the four options is actually satisfying that given condition so then you can just uh, mark off the option and go ahead you need not find out the actual answers uh, once you have that especially if you have linear equations and you find linear equations that uh, if by linear equations i know that p plus q is uh, 16 and p minus q is uh, 8 then I know uh, uh, P minus Q is 8. I will just see the options. Okay, this is 12 and 4. It only that fits. I need not actually solve the linear equation. This I'm taken as, I've taken a very simple linear equation. But most of the time, even if you have harder linear equations, go and see the options. When you are solving algebra, when you are solving logarithms, whenever you are solving all of these things, use the options. They are going to help you get to the answer faster. Okay. So this is my analysis of DC1. It was an entirely doable uh, 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 dash cat. Uh, always remember that uh, there will always be places where you will be tested like time sinks in quant section, harder RCs. It is very important that you rise to the challenge by um, showing that you have the self belief in you that you know that you can at least solve. Uh, 15 questions of uh, quant even if you're not able to solve the first two three it doesn't matter because if you have that self-belief you'll know that okay i can solve the remaining but if your self-belief is shaken then it is that that is the time when your uh, uh, entire attempt goes wrong when your marks are very low so always be, have this self-belief no matter what your current dash cat one score is okay do not uh, uh, feel demotivated do not feel uh, uh, dejected uh, believe in yourself that you have the ability to crack cat. Remember a single mock score or a single question should not shake your belief in your ability to solve this. There will always be those traps or those harder questions which will uh, make you feel that you are not able to solve this. But you should just leave them. Your uh, belief in your ability should remain unshaken. And even whatever your mock score is, forget the mock score as such. That is not important. Remember that you have to move from this point from dash cat 1 to dash cat 2 from dash cat 2 to dash cat 3 and so on till you reach like a very high point by dash cat 15 so that your cat attempt goes really well. Where you start doesn't matter, where you end up matters and that is what is important. So now between dash cat 1 and dash cat 2 what I want you to do is analyze the mock thoroughly, 
Find out the areas where you didn't do properly. See the analysis section, see the weak areas. Practice question from this uh, weak areas and come back stronger for Dashcat 2. So thank you very much and keep attempting Dashcats. Thank you.